Hey everyone, so you're shopping for a new starter for your GM engine. You either need more header clearance, that big old heavy iron stock piece is giving you troubles, or you just want something less taxing on your electrical system, or all of the above. Well, a Summit Racing High Torque Mini Starter does all of the above and won't break the bank. Once you choose the starter that best fits your needs, follow along as we cover some points for proper and trouble-free installation. First, let's make sure your battery cables and connections are clean, corrosion-free, and adequately sized. If your cables resemble these, fix it. This may be one of those reasons why you're here. When it comes to battery cables, bigger is better, especially if your battery is in the trunk. Two gauge cables are often enough for many applications, but if you have a long way to go and a big motor to turn over, it may be better to run a one gauge cable. And ground connections? Well, we can't say enough about those. Make sure your ground connections are clean, free of any paint or coatings, and properly secured. We recommend star washers to ensure good metal to metal contact. In the box with the starter, there will be bolts and shims. It's important to note that these bolts have knurling on them that hold the starter ultra steady under the torque of the turning motor and do not allow the starter to move around on the block. The starters also have the positive battery terminal conveniently labeled with a tag. Also, the mounting block is labeled with a sticker indicating which surface contacts the engine block. The included shims are there to compensate for machining tolerances for the many, many blocks that GM has produced over the years. Understand that when any part is mass produced, the finished product must fall into a tolerance window and will need to be adjusted upon final assembly. Install the starter first with no shims. And check the pinion gear backlash as per instructions. If the backlash measurement is too tight, add a shim and recheck. Still too tight? Add the second shim. It shouldn't be necessary to add more than two shims though. If the starter is not close enough to the flywheel, chances are you've chosen the wrong set of mounting bolt holes for your first try. Change up your mounting holes and reinstall so that it engages the flywheel. When you do get your starter mounted properly, be sure to understand that when your starter gear meshes with the flex plate or flywheel teeth during the start procedure, it likely will not extend far enough into the flywheel to be flush with it on the sides. It will likely only extend about three quarters of the way into the flywheel teeth. This is normal and it's nothing to worry about. Here's a common installation pitfall that happens with this starter. This terminal here, the one closest to the block, is the correct terminal for the positive battery cable. But this terminal down here tends to be the easiest terminal to access when you're on your back up under the car. Here's what the starter will do when you hook up the positive battery cable to the wrong terminal. The starter gear will spin, but not extend out to contact the flywheel. Here's the correct connection to make. Since I'm using a jumper box for this demo, I'm putting my jumper clamp across both the small key terminal and the correct terminal on the solenoid. So now the starter operates properly. You may be wondering why this starter gear is not retracting after the power is cut off. The reason for this is because our motor is on an engine stand and will not start. Should this motor start, the spinning flex plate will allow the starter gear to retract. Now, we understand that most of you will be lying under your cars while installing the starter. Space will be tight, patience will become short. But this setup procedure is critical to proper operation in life of your new starter. So be sure to take the time to get it right. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. <laughs>